And what is the title of the? Well, it's really the recipients of God's glory. Oh, amen. Amen. Recipients of God's glory is what we're going to be talking about today. And, and so I'm going to turn it over to Brother Fred. Well, we're excited about the message today because God has been uh, revealing himself to us. And uh, we, we're we learning uh, like you're learning. And, and uh, I believe that this is a, a lot that we need to know and uh, walk in. Uh, and I want to say that the title is recipients of his glory and there are ways to receive his glory. In other words, we have to make connections with the Holy Spirit. It's all about making a connection with him. And we're going to uh, show you some different ways to make connections with the Holy Spirit because John the Baptist said, uh, when Jesus comes, uh, he's going to baptize you with the uh, Holy Spirit and with fire. So it, he was referring to Jesus, that he's the one that baptizes us with the Holy Spirit and fire. And really, that's a that's a that's uh, an expression about the glory of God, because the glory is the presence of God. That's the presence of the Holy Spirit, but there's fire in it as well. And, and so don't think it's just something that's very uh, passive and just, just laying there. There's a fire in, the, in God's glory. And uh, a verse that, a couple of verses that I want to share to read from uh, Matthew 17. This is Jesus's prayer. And uh, John 17. Uh, John 17. This is Jesus's prayer. Uh, his high, it's called his high priestly prayer. And uh, what I want you to see here is that it's about the glory. He's asking for the glory. He's asking for all of us to receive God's glory. And uh, there's a couple of reasons back behind it because it's the glory that causes us to be united with one another. See, if you carry the glory and I don't carry the glory, then, then we're never going to come into agreement. Mm -hmm. It's the glory that brings us together and brings us together as one. And this is also the reason uh, that there's going to be a great revival because it's all about the glory being poured out. And that's when people are going to believe when they see that we're walking yeah. together Amen. in unity. So this is a very important uh, concept right here. Well, so this is where we're going to start. I'll ask you to read these verses in John 17. John 17, verses 20 through 22. I'm not asking on behalf of these alone, but also for those who believe in me through their word, that they may all be one, just as you, Father, you and I are one that they also may be in us, so that the world may believe that you have sent me. The glory which you have given me, I also have given to them, so that they may be one, just as we are one. Okay, so why is the world going to believe? It's because of the glory. When you're carrying the glory, and I'm carrying the glory, and we're releasing the glory, that's when the world is going to believe. That's when the great revival the end time revival, uh, the, and it's already starting. It's already starting all over the world. There's reports mm -hmm. coming in about uh, this end time revival that we are in, and it's all about the glory uh, because we won't be in agreement if we don't carry the glory. And uh, well, you may remember from Isaiah that uh, God would not uh, share his glory with another, but when you are one with the Lord, you're not another. You yeah, you're, one. you're one. You're one with him. And so he shares the glory with you. And that's the Jesus's prayer. So the glory is very important. And uh, the, the concept that we're talking about today is receiving the glory. And how can we be recipients of it? We've got to connect, uh, connect with the, with the Holy Spirit and, and receive his fire. And that's the presence of God. Uh, and fire, and that's the glory. And so how do we receive it? Well, we're going to be talking about mm -hmm. special places and, and uh, special times that we can re receive the glory. A and uh, first of all, we see in Deuteronomy 28, and we're not going to talk about all these verses, 
uh, but I will have uh, Sherry read when I explain it, uh, verse 12 out of it. Deuteronomy 28 talks about the blessings, and later on it talks about the curses, but right now we're starting in the blessings. So it, it says if, if you hear God's voice, you obey him, uh, you'll receive all the blessings. And, and verse 12 is the one I want to focus on here. What, what is verse 12, Sherry? The Lord will open unto you his good storehouse, the heavens. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. So if we're obedient, he opens the good storehouse, which is the heaven. He opens the heavens to us. Now, who is the person that believes and obeyed? That was Jesus. Hallelujah. And so, hallelujah. Jesus, so this promise here in the first few verses of Deuteronomy uh, 28, that was all fulfilled by Jesus. He, he is the obedient one. He's the one that obeyed what God said. He fulfilled the law and he, uh, the heavens were open. Okay, now if we think about what he talked to, to uh, Philip about, uh, Philip was amazed because Jesus had told him he had seen him under a tree before he got to Jesus. And he said, you think that's amazing? You're going to see other things that are amazing, Jesus said. You're going to see angels descending and ascending Sending. on the Son of God. Now, it's really interesting here. I mean, the Son of Man. Uh, he said the Son of Man. And uh, obviously, he's referring to himself, but that's also a general term, and it can be you as well. And so the angels can ascend and descend on you uh, mm -hmm. if you have Jesus in your heart. So, so uh, it said that you're going to be open heaven if we obey God. And that's Deuteronomy. But now in, uh, uh, I want to share you to read out of Matthew 3, 17, and we'll see the fulfillment of Deuteronomy uh, 28, which says, talks about the open heaven. Okay, Sherry, do you have a... Uh, yeah, it's 316. 316, Matthew. Mm -hmm. After he was baptized, Jesus came up immediately from the water, and behold, the heavens were open, and he saw the Spirit of God descending as a dove and settling upon him. Okay, so the open heaven is over Jesus. Ooh, the open the heaven... Hair. That was promised in Deuteronomy 28 to those people who are obedient. The open heaven opened up over Jesus. Now, where is Jesus? He's in you. He's in you. If you've been born again, Jesus is in you. And so he said, oh, we'll see the angels ascending and descending on the Son of Man, but he's in you. And so that means that if you believe, then you can see angels ascending and descending on you. <laughs> because oh, yeah. Jesus is in you. And so uh, there's an open heaven over you. Now, what we really want to say is, yes, there's an open heaven over all of us because Jesus lives inside of us, but we can expand that and, and, and multiply uh, the glory of God in our lives. And that's really what we're talking about, receiving the glory, receiving the glory. Yeah. We know that it's there. Now, something that the Lord spoke to Sherry and I years ago is that there's an open heaven over our home. Yes, amen. Okay, now how did that happen? Well, we believe God. We seek God. We, we, we are after uh, God. Uh, and just like Matthew 6, 33, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. So we've done that. We've invited people into our home over and over again. And uh, the people have been saved, saved delivered, and delivered. delivered and filled with the spirit here in our home. There's an open portal over our home. And where are we today? Well, we're in our home. We're inviting you into our home. And Hallelujah. I would just say, yes, we have in our home. Yes. And, and so consequently, you can receive the glory today uh, because it's poured out here and we're sharing and opening up our home with you. But now, not only that, there, there are a couple of applications of this message today uh, that I want you to think about. And first of all, you can have an open heaven over your home. You have it all over your life. 
uh, because Jesus lives inside you. But if, if you do what we're talking about today, you'll learn how to establish an open heaven over your home so that when people come into your house, they will feel the peace of God. They will uh, know the presence, uh, the of, the presence of God. They'll be healed, delivered, and set free when they come into your home. And that's a good application of this message today. Something important. We all need an open heaven over our home. I know a lot of people really face a lot of chaos and hostility and all kinds of things going on in their home, but you need a home of peace, a sanctuary. A sanctuary of peace. Of peace. And so we're we're going to be talking about that today. And how can you open up the heavens uh, over you and be a recipient of this glory that we're talking about? Because it's going to happen all over the world. It's happening. Amen. And the, it's the glory, see, being poured out that causes the great revival. Mm, hallelujah. Hallelujah. And, and it's because people see the glory yes. is upon you. you. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So this is an important message. Okay. So let's think about this message. And uh, uh, there's a passage in Jeremiah 6, uh, verse 16, that talks about walking in the ancient paths. Oh, amen. So, amen, so amen. there are some places we need to go and, and receive uh, the glory of God in. There, there are places. And, and we're going to talk about these special places and special times. Mm, mm. And uh, it it is so important yes. to realize that we need more and more of the glory, more and more of the presence of, of God. God. Amen. Amen. And, and and we want the second real application of this message today is that we're going to impart some things to those of you who would like to receive it. And we're going to give you, as, as we go through this message today, uh, a story of some of the things that we have experienced in the glory of God and how, and that's important. See, if you're, if we're going to impart something to you, you need to realize what it is and you need to believe. So if you don't believe that we have anything to impart, there's no, no reason of us uh, trying to impart something, but God has imparted things into our lives and we're willing to let it flow out and impart it into your life. If you want to, if you want it, and you're willing to receive it, and you believe. Amen. So it's about believing. And so that's the reason we have this teaching here, uh, is to talk about these things. And I'm talking about special places and special uh, times. And, and the, there are a couple of different thoughts about special places I want to talk about. And and first of all, Genesis uh, 28, and this this is a man, Jacob, and he was running for his life. Uh, and, and he laid down one night and he put his head on a, a rock. That's not a very soft pillow, but he mm -hmm. put his head on a rock and he had a dream and he saw uh, something. And so I'm going to ask Jerry to read us uh, what it was that he said. So one of the special places that Brother Fred is talking about right now uh, is called a portal. Uh, and he was afraid and said, how awesome it is, this place. This is none other than the house of God. And this is the gate of heaven. Okay. So this is Jacob. He saw uh, in his dream, he saw uh, a, a ladder. ladder to heaven and angels ascending and descending, ascending and descending. And he said, oh, this is an awesome place. And this is none other than the gate to heaven. Mm. Okay. So I'll this is you. called a portal. Uh, so there are open heavens and there are sometimes they're called portals they're called gateways gateways and windows of heaven and and so this is talked about throughout the bible and we're not going to go through a lot of different examples but i, I want you to show to show you here there are special uh portals and uh, sherry and i have been at uh special portals, and we have received impartations uh, from the Lord himself in special portals, places that we've been. We'll talk a little bit about those. 
And uh, uh, so we've gone. So when we find out there's a portal someplace, uh, we've traveled uh, many different places uh, around the world and, and, and seen these portals where, where God's glory is poured out. Now, not only does, does uh, uh, God pour out his glory through these portals, but the, the devil doesn't like it, and, and he tries to cover them up. And, uh, close, what, them up. and yeah. close them up. And, and so these uh, portals, uh, when, when they're open, oh, you, can, you can just, um, it's a closer relationship to the Lord where you can hear his voice more clearly, where you he feel can his hear presence. Your, uh, and he can hear your prayers. You'll know with uh, certainty that he's hearing your uh, prayers. So when you go there, you'll see you'll have in angelic visitations and uh, 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 see things in the heavens. Uh, we were recently at a portal called uh, Prayer Mountain in North Carolina, and, and that was uh, a group of uh, people, really, they had come from Germany, and, and they spent 100 years in prayer, day and night, uh, day and night, 24 seven, hundred years, and, and, and that was a place that they were praying. And one of the places they were praying, and, and now it's described as one of the most uh, powerful yeah. portals on the earth. Yeah. Uh, not the most important, but one of the most important portals on the earth. And people go there all the time. Uh, receive to, healings and miracles. And, and and to just see the heavens open. And, and Sherry uh, had an experience where she saw heaven and she saw angels and she saw the uh, throne room of God and, and the... the uh, a streets of gold, mm -hmm. transparent gold in the river of our life. And so when you go to these portals, and the reason I'm saying this is I want you to know that we have been in these places. We seek the presence of God. And when we hear about portals, we go there, we see, we pray. And when the portals have been closed up, uh, then, then we open it up. The devil wants yeah. to close those up because he doesn't want uh, you to have ready access uh, to heaven and to the things of God. And, and uh, okay, Sherry has something. Well, I just want to give a, another example, and that is um, uh, Oak Ridge uh, is a portal of God. It's a portal where God pours out his glory, pours out his spirit, uh, pours out his richness. And uh, Jean Isabel was sent there by the Holy Spirit uh, with her two children. Uh, and then uh, the God did wonderful miracles there. He did uh, one right after the other. Uh, he protected her from being uh, killed many times, uh, but he poured out his glory in Oak Ridge. And so that was the very first mission trip that we went on, uh, uh, Sister Harriet can remember, uh, was was to Oak Ridge, and and the Lord touched Brother Fred and I there, and the Lord touched our children there, and uh, and and so that glory uh, we received, we were recipients of the glory that was poured out, and it's still being poured out. And I'm going to encourage you, those of you that are on Oak Ridge, that you begin to pray and, and, and ask the Lord to open up uh, even wider uh, the windows of heaven, the heavens over Oak Ridge uh, in the name of Jesus, because that portal is there and perhaps the enemy has tried to shut it up over the years. But praise the name of Jesus, I believe, oh, hallelujah, I have a stirring in my spirit right now. The spirit of God is all over me, that that portal is being wide opened again. Hallelujah. And he's going, you're going to see revival in Oak Ridge in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Praise God. So there are portals. There, there are places that are very important. Oh. Uh, and I, I think about um, Elijah. Elijah wanted to have a showdown with the uh, false prophets of Baal. And so he went up on the Mount of Carmel. 
And there, uh, there was a showdown. Who could bring fire down? Which God? And really, there turns out to be only one God. Amen. And he was Amen. the one that brought down fire. But I want you to see that uh, Elijah did it at a place where there was an altar. altar. There was altar. Re remember where, where we started this message was about there. Uh, our earlier verse, a verse that we talked about, there are ancient ways, ancient oh, paths. Oh, and Elijah yeah. knew that. So there on uh, Mount Carmel, uh, he, he went up to that uh, altar. So the, it was a portal of glory. <laughs> we don't know exactly who it was that had established it, but it was an altar uh, to the Lord. And that's where the fire fell. And so we have to make connections. See, mm -hmm. uh, uh, Ecclesiastes says, uh, as it was, so will it be again. Hallelujah. And, and it, and that's chapter one. And then uh, Ecclesiastes three says, as it was, so is it now. So what I want you to know is you need to make connections with these ancient portals. There are ancient portals all over the earth, uh, some in, in your areas. And when you go to those places, uh, then the glory of God is there. Sometimes you have to reopen it, and Sherry and I have mm -hmm. uh, reopened one recently in our area, um, but sometimes you have to reopen them, but you get glory, and that's that's a place where you receive more and more glory. You know, there's no limit on how much glory you can receive, and, and uh, even if you can't go to a geographic location, Remember, in the end of this message, we'll be talking about imparting to you what we have received, because what we have received, we freely receive, and so we freely, freely give. give. Okay, so there are other kinds of places, special places. I, I talked about portals, first of all, but there are other kinds of special places where you can receive this uh, uh, glory of God, a and a, a good example here is Isaiah. Uh, no, uh, Isaac. Isaac, uh, see, Abraham had gone out and he had dug a lot of wells. And Isaac came along uh, after Abraham was gone. And uh, it, it turned out that the Philistines had filled up the wells. A and so uh, that's a good example. Let's say somebody, a Christian has been well, working and laboring in the Lord and laboring in prayer and intercession, and they open up a, 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 a avenue to God, an open heaven over them, and, and then the devil doesn't like it, and so he tries to, to stop it, because what is a portal anyway, but it's a place of worship to God, and, mm -hmm. uh, and, and the devil doesn't want that, uh, and, and so he's, he tries to stop those up, but those are places where the glory is poured out. That's where, where we can receive more and more of the glory out with uh, see visions and angelic visitations and, and uh, uh, hear from the Lord and revelations and, uh, and have dreams like Jacob. Jacob had a dream. He saw uh, angels of God. Uh, and, and so Isaac now, and this is called redigging the well. So sometimes... Uh, where people have labored and, and they've opened up, uh, have an open heaven to, to, to God, and then uh, people come in and reject what was uh, what was done. Uh, for example, uh, we went uh, for years to, uh, and were connected with a pastor uh, that uh, had operated in the gifts of the Spirit, and uh, there were many healings and deliverances there, and then he passed away, and and the people who took over didn't believe in those things, so that closed that air. So he he had an open heaven over what he was doing, and then people came in after him, uh, and they didn't believe in those kinds of things. So that that closed, closed it up. Closed it up, and so we have to keep believing and keep opening up those open heavens. It's over Jesus. Remember, he was the one who fulfilled Deuteronomy twenty-eight, received the promises that the storehouse of heaven would be opened up uh, and the heavens would be opened up, but he is in you. And so you can open the heaven in your, uh, in your, it might be your church building, or it might be in your downtown area, or it might be in your home, wherever, 
because you have Jesus in you, it's whatever the Holy Spirit leads you uh, to open up. And so Isaac uh, in um, uh, 26. I, Genesis 26, mm -hmm. uh, he redug those wells. And I'm mm -hmm. not going to uh, to go over all of these, but he but finally he went to Beersheba. Now Beersheba, uh, it means the well of seven or well of oaths, oaths. And so oaths is really important here because he covenanted it with a king. And so really that meant that the king recognized his power. Uh, and when he did that, when he went to this well of oaths or well of covenant, then uh, the Lord appeared to him. Where, oh, wow. Where, wow. Where, where is the Lord going to appear? But well, where, yes. where, where he redig wells. Yes. That, I'm a where they, yeah. I'm a now, in the natural, you might say, well, that's just a natural thing, but it's a symbol uh, of uh, going deep down and receiving the Holy Spirit. And so you want wells uh, of, living water. of living water flowing up uh, in you and through you. And a good example uh, of a well uh, in, in our nation uh, was at Azusa Street. Uh, oh, because in the early 1900s, there was a, a great uh, revival there. In California. In California, Los Angeles, California. And... Uh, uh, and that was a well. That was a well where people labored and they, and they brought down the glory of God. And we call that a well. And sometimes you have to re redig those. You go there uh, believing that some, some of that glory is still there because God pours out the glory. And where he pours out the glory, it's still there. I mean, it still I mean. energize you uh, until people reject it. That's right. And so Sherry and I have gone there to Zuzu Street. And now, of course, the building's gone because that was over 100 years ago. But but they do have it all marked out and laid out with a, uh, just a patio, a patio kind of. Uh, with a big monument. Uh, to it. And so we, the Lord told us to stand there and he would uh, pour out the glory on us. Uh, and again, why am I telling you these stories? Because I want you to know that we have gone uh, we've been we've been seeking the glory of God. We've been recipients of the glory of God. We're pouring it out, and before this uh, message is over with, we're going to impart it to you if you want it. Because oh, maybe yeah. we've gone places that you haven't gone or that you can't go, but we've gone and what we've received and what we've received, we we freely give uh, out to you. Now I, I've talked about that we are recipients and how to receive the glory. And I'm just talking about some of the ways, but there's some places you can go uh, and, and to receive more of his glory. But there are also special times, special mm -hmm. times uh, that you can receive more of his glory. And in Leviticus uh, 23, we won't um, go there, but it was appointed feasts uh, in Leviticus 23. And, and that was a time for the people to come and present themselves to, to the Lord. He had all of these feasts. And, uh, and, and that was a time that the glory was going to be poured out in, in, in those feasts because you were meeting with God. You came, you Hallelujah. came Hallelujah. Uh, there to the temple to meet with God. That was a very idea behind it. And, and you might think, well, we don't observe those feasts anymore mm -hmm. uh, because now we're New Testament. But I want you to think for a moment. Uh, when was Jesus uh, crucified? He was he was crucified on the Passover and he was raised and resurrected uh, on the uh, Feast of Unleavened Bread. And, and then you go 50 days beyond that and the day of Pentecost. Pentecost. And so let's just think for a minute. And you and so by the time 50 days after his resurrection, he'd already gone up. He went up uh, and was ascend ascended on high 40 days. And so that's New Testament times. New Testament times. Jesus is ascended on high, and yet they went up into the upper room, 120 uh, men and women, and they, and they consecrated themselves, and they prayed, uh, and, they, and they sought the Lord. And, and then... 
Glory to Hallelujah. God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Pentecost happened. The outpouring yeah, of the, the Holy, Holy Spirit. Spirit. I'll ask Sherry to read these first couple of verses. When the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place, and suddenly a noise like a violent rushing wind came from heaven, whoo, and it filled the whole house where they were sitting, and tongues that looked like fire appeared upon them, distributing themselves, and a tongue rested on each one of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with different tongues as the Spirit was giving them the ability to speak out. Okay. Hallelujah. The glory fell. Now, it fell on a particular feast day. Amen. Because there are special days and there are special places. And the special days are the feast days. And you can look up the calendar, the Jewish calendar, when the feast days are this year. And the Lord came to feast with them. Yeah. Came to dine with them. Yeah. Woo! Glory. And, and that's that's what we need to do. We need to recognize, oh, there's some days uh, that we can approach God and we can hear from God. We can receive God from God that we couldn't at other times. And so you keep those dates in mind and those times in mind that there are special times and he never said they ended uh at the cross no those feasts yeah, those yeah. feasts uh the, the idea of man presenting himself and women presenting themselves to the lord on special occasions he's made those appointments they're appointments that okay, he well, has to be one. with you okay and there's one coming up and this uh, is concerning, uh, like in the book of Esther, and it's called the, the Purim, and it's uh, March 6th and 7th. It's coming up uh, just, you know, in just a few days, and it's about purification and about presenting yourself as a pure vessel unto the Lord and uh, consecrating yourself, rededicating uh, your life to the Lord. And purifying your your spirit, your soul, your mind, your body uh, unto the Lord. And I guarantee you, uh, the Lord will be there. The Lord will be there to feast with you. The Lord will be there to open up and pour out his glory uh, upon you. Hallelujah. We have a, a, a good friend who's uh, had the conferences she calls them the Esther conferences. Uh, I believe she's had it mm -hmm. here in uh, Georgia for about ten years, uh, uh, and, and just year after year, and 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 the women invites the women that, to participate. But it's not a, a women's thing, really. And, and Sherry and I both have participated in it. Uh, uh, so it's a time, and you don't have to go to some kind of event. This is not an event I'm talking about. It's a time to present yourself to the Lord. And, uh, and not to do all of the old rituals. This is not about rituals, but it is to realize, oh, God has appointed some special times uh, for us to present ourselves to him uh, and do certain things. We have to realize Jesus fulfilled the law, uh, but the, he didn't do away with the feasts and the festivals. And, mm -hmm. and so on the day of Pentecost, and see, again, I just want to emphasize, mm -hmm. he had already uh, been... Uh, resurrected from the dead. He had already been walking on the earth 40 days. He ascends back on high and they still celebrated uh, the feast of Pentecost. And at that time, the Holy Spirit fell. That was not a coincidence. That, I want to emphasize mm -hmm. again, that was not a coincidence that right. the Holy Spirit fell on Pentecost. Hallelujah. Pentecost Hallelujah. Time. It's, an, it's a time that God appointed in his calendar and so in this year there are times that he's appointed for you to come into his presence hallelujah, and seek him. hallelujah. And, and hallelujah. it's a time to see visions and dream dreams and, receive your healing and receive uh, from him the, uh, and see uh, angelic uh, visitations and receive uh, from them you know because you are an open uh heaven there's an open heaven over you and angels and are ascending and descending, and they're they're taking your request to him and bringing uh, blessings down and and answers to your prayers down, and, and so we want to expand. Glory to God! Want to expand 
Hallelujah. Our lives in the presence of God and the deeper things. And uh, I'm just going to mention, in closing, I'm just going to mention something that God spoke to us the other day, that in these portals and in these times, special places and special times, there's a glory zone there. And in that glory zone, that's the gifts work. Uh, the More spirit, intensified. They're intensified. And so uh, you can uh, begin to operate more in your giftings uh, and and see visions and expect visions uh, when you come into these places where the heavens are open, where, where the portals are open. It's a glory zone, and, and your gifts, your gifts, are, are intensified. And so, uh, of course, one of the open uh, heavens, uh, as I pointed out earlier, is our home, and we are opening it up and inviting you. So you can participate. And you can feel the Holy Spirit and receive the Holy Spirit and the glory of God uh, and receive your healing, receive your deliverance. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. And if you haven't been filled with the Holy Spirit, Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In tongues, today's your day. You can, you can do that. Uh, and, and so just in conclusion, I want to say there were really two main points that you can apply of this message today. First, you can make your home uh, an open heaven, an open heaven over your home mm. uh, to receive peace and, and healing and deliverance. And, and secondly, we're going to impart what we have received from the Holy Spirit because we have gone uh, places and we've seen things and received things uh, that have really uh, just been mind boggling beyond thank what I could have even imagined. I'm going to turn it over to Sherry. Thank, and I just want to say thank you for being here today. Thank you, Jesus. I know that each one of you want uh, to go higher with the Lord and receiving more of his glory is what's going to take you there. And you're going to see your ministry expand. You're going to see uh, all of the resources that you need uh, come together uh, to do the will of the Lord and to uh, be part of the kingdom work. And I believe that receiving more of his glory is what's going to help us uh, take back what the enemy has stolen from us and to proceed to the root. You know, with GPS, when you get off track, uh, the, your little GPS voice will say, proceed to the root, proceed to the root. And I believe that receiving the glory of God will help you to uh, proceed uh, to the root. And, uh, and so we just, we ask the Lord right now, if you, I'm going to put, uh, so I can see all your faces. What is it? Okay. And in the name of Jesus, um, uh, uh, just raise your hands to the Lord. Uh, if you want to receive, uh, just this impartation of the glory of God. Uh, that you will, uh, your gifts will be intensified. Uh, all of your resources will be, come to you in the name of Jesus. There will be an open heaven uh, against you. And right now, in Jesus' name, I'm imparting what the Lord has poured out upon Brother Fred and I, has put in our hearts, has put uh, upon us. In the name of Jesus, we are transforming. It's going out right now right now in Jesus name uh, to you. Hallelujah. Receive more of the glory of the Lord. Hallelujah. Lord, we thank you for that. We thank you more of your presence. Let us feel more of your, your power, your, your love, uh, your peace, your joy. Uh, in the name of Jesus, more of your abundance, Lord. Oh, in Jesus precious name. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Let us see your angels, Lord. Let us have visions and dreams, Lord. Uh, let us receive revelation uh, from your word, Lord, in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We thank the Lord for that. We thank the Lord where he has, has sent us, and we thank uh, the Lord for each one of you uh, receiving today. You are recipients of his glory. 
Hallelujah. 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 Now I'm going to open up the floor if you've got a comment about this message and about what you've received. Uh, I know the Lord is touching hearts right now and he's working in muscles right now. I see the Holy Spirit working in your body right now in Jesus' name, that pain is leaving your body. Oh, hallelujah. Uh, that your bloodstream is being strengthened. I see your blood cells right now. The red blood cells are being uh, uh, producing uh, and they're getting stronger and stronger uh, in the name of Jesus, overcoming every sickness, overcoming every disease uh, in your body. Diabetes is going. Hallelujah. Arthritis is going right now in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Praise the name of your heart disease uh, is, is leaving right now, leaving your body. Oh, praise the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lord, we thank you for your glory. We thank you that you will uh, re just give to us everything that you have in Jesus' name. Abba, Father, we love you. We love you. Hallelujah. 